The ball on Drag Race is just about as standard as you can get for a challenge on the show. You just take the runway they do each week and instead do three of them. Granted, there's always a design aspect to the challenges, the third look is normally a look they had to create in the workroom, but at the end of the day, what matters most is the presentation of your looks. And yet, over the years, even though the baseline of the challenge has stayed the same, it's changed a lot. And that's what I want to talk about today. I originally had a script for this after the Season 14 video came out, but I wasn't really sure how to pull it off, but I think I found a way. I've been having a lot of fun talking about the various challenges on the show, and I think the ball has a lot of small details that can make it work or make it feel really boring. And before I jump straight into the video, I just want to say thank you guys so much for 50k, I'm going to do a special video down the line. If you guys enjoy my content, you can go ahead and like and subscribe, follow my Instagram and Twitter, and without further ado, let's talk about balls. There was probably a better way I could phrase that. The balls early on in Drag Race had the queens do more than serve just three looks. The first ever ball had the queens design a look after a flavor of absolute vodka and then pitch it to Jeffrey Moran. And for the second ball on season two, they had a Q&A portion to it. We've seen other little twists to the ball like narration on seasons eight and All Stars five, and I think it's welcome pretty much every time because it adds to the presentation and just an extra layer to the challenge. But how the balls appear nowadays, we can never have a narration, an ad read, or a Q&A portion. And it's for one main reason, they appear a lot sooner in the show than they have in the past. Up until season six, the ball had the top four queens normally competing, and then after season six, it was the top five, up until season 10 when it appeared in episode 4. Seasons 2 to 9 had a performance at the beginning of each of the balls to kind of start it off, but season 10 onward had Rue on the main stage and then they immediately jumped into the ball. I really don't think these performances were consequential in any way, I think it was just kind of a way to fill the time and start something off, but when you move the ball up earlier into the season, filling the time doesn't become an issue anymore. And that's why I think they did it. Seasons 1 to 9 had a brisk 42-ish minute runtime, while season 10 and onward has an hour long runtime. Where the ball showed up in the past and how it's formatted just doesn't make enough time to get to the hour mark. So I do think it's really smart of them to move it up. Even with the performance, most of the time these earlier seasons only clocked in around 6 or 7 minutes for the ball. And these new ones, depending on how many queens there are, can be over 15 minutes. For someone like me, a Drag Race super fan, I just love to see all the runways, but even I can tell it can drag sometimes. When I watch the newer seasons with my parents who love shows like Project Runway, it's still really hard for them to follow because there's so many queens and so many looks. They're often like, wait, what's this category again? Or like when there's a commercial break in the middle of the ball, they come back and they're confused if we're on a new category or if it's still the same one. It's just a lot. Of course, me and other fans of the show can follow the ball pretty well, but I think it's a little isolating for new viewers. New viewers may not know the difference between a quality outfit and a corset with balls taped to it. So instead, this whole time, they're just watching the runway, maybe enjoying the looks, but if they aren't, it's just kind of a drag. It's almost the opposite of what I discussed with the acting challenges. In the acting challenges, for veteran viewers, it's easy to understand who is going to be in the bottom, but where there may be a little predictability for older viewers, new viewers appreciate it because they can follow it really easily. But then new viewers are just looking at these runways and not really knowing if these are top-worthy looks or bottom-worthy looks, while seasoned viewers have a pretty good idea of what's going on and who's probably going to be in the top or the bottom. I think the absolute worst example that even I was having trouble following at points was the ball in Season 14. They decided to do two balls depending on the group they came in with. I liked all the looks, but it was just too much to follow. I do understand their intention behind it because it was the biggest cast they've ever tried to do a ball with. So in order to keep things fresh, they had the different categories instead of just seeing 14 of the same look. But then it brings up a lot of factors that I don't think applied for this season, but if they do it in the future, it may apply. Different categories may yield different or better looking finished products. They stayed really general with the categories here, which I think was super smart, but in the future if the category get more extravagant, a certain group of queens can be at an advantage because their category was just better fit for the challenge. But this is all hypotheticals, let's just move on. I think two of the most tightly aired episodes of Drag Race have come from two ball episodes. Those episodes being the Sugar Ball and the Glitter Ball. Because the balls came so late in the season, basically the last challenge before the crown, it always felt like the culmination of so much work. Something about it being so late in the season made it feel so much more grandiose than maybe an acting challenge like on season 13, and these two episodes especially had some of the most entertaining, tension-filled moments in the workroom. When it's only a top 4 or top 5, every single look is going to be examined under a microscope in a way that we can't see on the modern seasons. Someone like Jinx was shown to have a rocky aesthetic on season 5, so we're thinking to ourselves, are they going to be able to make it to the end? We saw back in episode 1 that they were able to squeak by because there were some worse looks than theirs, but now that they're at the point that they're getting critiques every week, every single runway matters so much. 
And I think this calls back to another one of my issues with the modern ball. I feel like the ball has lost its weight as it increased its entrance over the course of the new seasons. It went from a challenge where every single queen is going to be critiqued on the main stage for these three looks to a challenge where if you have some decent looks, you're probably going to squeak by. When there's upwards of 42 looks that we have to see, of course, some that may not be seen as the best are still going to get by because there's some looks that are just a little worse than them. So now when they come super early on, you just have to hope that three queens have slightly worse looks than yours in order to squeeze by. It just feels like the ball has less impact now, but one positive that I can say is that more people get to show off their runways. Another small issue that I briefly want to touch on is the placement of the ball in this season. In a different way, I know that was basically what I was talking about this whole time. Both seasons 10 and 11 had the ball placed three or four episodes after the first design challenge. So then we get a design challenge in episode one with a ball and the third runway is also designed. And then in season 11, another design challenge happens soon after. The ball being so close to other design challenges again just makes it lose its finality and grandiose nature. Even though I've kind of raved about having the ball later in the season, the best placement that I've seen for the ball is on Canada 2 and in Espana 2. For Canada, it was based off of the seven deadly sins for their top seven, which I think is just one of the best ideas they've had. Espana's ball ended up still being 15 minutes long, but Canada's ball was only eight minutes, which I think was the perfect pacing. The whole episode was really good, a good balance of workroom talks, and then the runway wasn't super long, and then we got a good lip sync. I think the US season should take a page out of Canada's book. Maybe shift the ball over towards a midway challenge because they could still squeeze out a lot of screen time with the runways, but there would also be more storyline going on. Sometimes because the queens are so freshly in the workroom when these balls happen, there's just not a lot of great interaction that could be going on. They're just still very new to each other, so a lot of it just boils down to, oh, what's your family like? Or, oh, their outfit is not going that great. And we see this in Canada Season 2 with Isis and Pythia having a competition over who's going to win this design challenge. I'm not saying we need to go back to the late season tension that builds in the workroom over the ball, but having just a little bit of storyline going on while it happens it can create some good narrative for episodes where the workroom segments feel a little lackluster. It feels like the ball can maybe serve as a halfway point for the queens on the season, maybe back to back with Snatch Game. People often and coin snatch game as the challenge you have to get through in order to really feel like you're in the competition and I think that was a little true for the ball but because it's so early now it's not as true. So again if we move it to the middle back to back with snatch game it feels like you're getting over the hump and entering the end game of the competition. Like with the ball, design challenges in general on Drag Race are some of the most standard that you can get ever, and that can be just a little bit frustrating as a viewer. If you don't like one design challenge episode that you saw, there's not a lot of variation with them, so you might not enjoy the rest. They're very safe bets for challenges, very low budget for production, and can create some iconic moments here and there, but at this point, I hope they spice it up just a little bit. Between the balls and just general design challenges, one of the best variations we've gotten is who wore it best on UK Series 2. It pitted two queens against each other with one of the queens being in the top and then the other being in the bottom for critiques. It was super easy to follow, pitted two queens against each other which was super entertaining, and just overall showed they could have this variation easily. For right now, I think general design challenges on Drag Race are just fine, but when you throw the ball in between them or just super early on, it doesn't have the same effect that I think it should. But we've seen on UK Series 2 and the split ball on Season 14 that they're trying to do variation with these design challenges and I do appreciate that. Runtime is definitely the biggest issue nowadays, but that's just kind of been the underlying issue for most of the VH1 run. So moving the ball up in order to showcase more looks and make the runtime longer is completely understandable, but I hope in the future they switch it up just a little bit, maybe add an extra element to the challenge, or just have it midway or later in the season. The team's super creative, and I know they can do it. Thank you guys for watching. I'm sorry that this was a little bit of a shorter video, but I'm about to start college, and I need to focus on that just a little bit going in. Videos are not going to be slowing down by any means, but I just need to gauge my workload this first week, and it'll be fine by the next week. Have a good week, spread some love, I'll see you soon with another video.